guys, my name is Aaron Chalner, your voice for the sports you love, and welcome to a brand new video from the NBA. Now, of course, this video is very, very special because I'm going to be talking about another new coach in the NBA that's talking titles. That's right, the new Houston Rockets coach has been talking one goal and one goal only, the NBA Championship. Now, we're going to be sharing an official report from the ESPN and sharing my thoughts on it. Of course, looking at the roster as well, because it's nice to have a look at the current roster, see where they can improve, things like that. So, let's get into this video. So, let's get into it. So, let's make sure you like, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell so you never miss another video. And for now, let's get straight into this by first of all looking at this ESPN report to tell you exactly what his mindset is thinking of. So according to ESPN, after an off-season of major change for the Houston Rockets, the team's new general manager and head coach emphasized that the franchise's primary goal remains the same. Chase a championship with a roster that features perennial MVP candidate James Harden as the franchise centerpiece. Now, general manager Raphael Stone, a longtime Rockets front office employee promoted after Daryl Morey's resignation, said during a virtual news conference to introduce recently hired head coach Stephen Silas, for the last eight years or so, our goal has been to reach win the championship because we have James Harden. Uh, we've still got James Harden. Our goal is still to win a championship, and if you've got him, you're halfway there. It's incumbent on me and Steven and this whole team to figure out the rest of the whole, but the key piece is there. Now, if you want a bit of information on Steven Silas, who's 47 years old, who's two decades of experience as an NBA assistance coach, includes most recently serving as Rick Carlisle's offensive coordinator with the Dallas Mavericks, was selected from the pool of candidates of Rockets interviewed to replace Mike D'Antoni. He opted not to attempt to return to the Rockets after the contract expired at the end of the season leaving Houston with a franchise record .682 winning percentage, having gone 217-101 to 101 over four regular seasons. The Rockets won at least one playoff series in each season under D'Antoni, advancing to the 2018 Western Conference Finals. Now, we confer now Salas confirmed his former head coach John Lucas would return to the Rockets staff after being a finalist in Houston's head coaching searching, embraced the expectations that come with inheriting a roster that features a pair of recent MVPs in Harden and Russell Westbrook. Now, Salas went on to say, for me, it's been my first head coaching experience and being in a win-now situation. That's great. I'm a win-now coach. To not have to deal with growing and all that type of stuff, to think championship right away is exciting for me and I'm prepared for it and ready with it. Now, he's already had discussions with Harden and Westbrook as part of the interview process. He said he plans to make tweaks but not major changes to Houston's unique offensive system. The Rockets rely heavily on isolations, bucking the league-wide trend, primarily based because Harden is arguably the best one-on-one -on -one player in NBA history. Now, I've used some stats from NBA.com. Harden has had more isolation plays than any other team in each of the past two seasons. He averaged 14.1 isolation possessions per game last season. The Rockets 22.6 and Portland Trailblazers 11.2 overall were the only teams to um, average double digit isos per game and produce 1.12 points possession on those plays. Now Westbrook with 7.4 isolations per game at 0.87 points possession on those plays, ranked second in the league in isolation usage. They were sixth in offense, and for me to come in and make wholesale changes, that doesn't make sense to me. Now, Stone it said he ant it anticipates a roster with more optionality entering next season after the Rockets played exclusive small ball following the full-team trade in February that brought forward Robert Covington to Houston at the price of center Clint Capella and a first-round so there we go, that is the story from Steven Silas. And you know what? Fair play to Steven Silas for saying he's not going to make wholesale offensive changes. And you know what? I think that's the right decision to go for because you've got to look at the current Rockets roster. Now, excluding the free agency, excluding the draft, excluding any future trade picks, you've got to look at the current roster. Harden and Westbrook are the key MVPs in that roster. And... Look at the other players around him. It doesn't matter who's around him. It could be anyone. And you look at that and you've got to think, yes, isolation with Westbrook and Harden is the best. Isolation. He's what, And Harden's one of the, arguably the best one-on-one -on -one player in NBA history, with the, especially with isolation play. And 
like I said, the offence wasn't the problem. And I like how Silas is not making wholesale offensive changes, but I think his biggest changes are going to be on the defence. Now, you've got to look at his past as an as a assistant coach, and it was an offensive coordinator with the Dallas Mavericks. So, again, offence is going to be his calculation of gameplay. He's going to focus on defence as well, but offence is usually the best form of... A, of Attack is the best form of defense, so offense is the best form of defense. So he's going to try and utilize that. He's going to try and keep a nice compact defensive shape at the back, but he's also going to expand going forward, and he's going to play exciting plays and bringing exciting offensive tactics for Harden and Westbrook to thrive on the court. And if anything, I think the Rockets could be chasing a, a spot in... Um, to, to win the NBA championship and you've got to look at Silas's past record with the offensive stuff and think he's a guy who knows how to play offensive um, basketball so Harden and Westbrook are going to thrive from that because they're isolation players they're going to play that they're going to play team plays as well but they are isolation attackers so they're going to play isolation basketball at its finest on its best day so Steven Silas has just got to sort out the defensive shape of that team and then they're all right. They're pretty much going to be challenging for an NBA title again. So it's going to be a big ask for Steven Silas, but I think it's a challenge that I am optimistic about from his point of view. Now, it's very interesting. I mean, the draft is going to be interesting. The free agency is going to be interesting to see who they you know, decide to pick up if they want to pick someone up from the free agency or you know, if they want to do something in the draft in terms of specific players they want to build for the future because you know, you might want to sort out the current squad but if you want to be here for the next few years, for the five, next 5, 10, 15 years as a coach then you're going to have to look towards the future in the back of your mind as well and that's where the draft comes in. So if I was the Houston Rockets in the draft, I'd be looking for someone who's got a good uh, rebounding, who's good at taking the ball off people, I need someone who's going to be good in terms of defending well, so someone like a good centre, either a good centre or a good proper defensive guard, someone who's going to uh, do the dirty work and get away with it, someone who's going to be good on the court at getting the ball back and sending it forward to the small forwards, the power forwards. Uh, and vice versa. So you need a good guard or you need a good centre who's going to be tall, strong, impressive wingspan, someone who's going to get the rebounds and someone who's going to play the defensive work and, and, and help keep the defensive shape and then expand out again when you're on the offence. So if I was the Rockets, I would be looking for someone who's good in the defensive side of things. And then you've, got your, you've already got your great offence just keep improving in that in the future prospects kind of department with the with the NBA draft over the next couple of years. And you keep your defensive ones as well. You get some defensive options in the draft as well. And you've got an exciting squad. So, Steven Salas has got a lot of work to do over the next couple of years. But, I'm optimistic. I think he can do it. So, uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. But for now, guys, thank you very, very much for watching this video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And for now, I'm Aaron Chana. Have a nice day. Oh, I'm a